Hello, kitten. W would you like, would you like to tell your your friends what we're talking about today? We're talking about a very important piece of material. We're, we're talking about. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, we're talking about how to build training plans. If kitten will be kind enough to let us start the video here. I'm gonna have to take care of this first. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Sarah and I make videos about health and fitness and all of those things, endurance sports. So if you're into that sort of thing and have or dream of having multi-sport equipment falling out of every corner, crack, orifice, and closet of your home to the extent that you may or may not be considering asking your significant other for their side of the bed to store more shoes, you've come to the right place. You should probably hit any and all of those buttons down below. I'd recommend against asking for that side of the bed. Forget the whole shoe thing. Don't piss off the boss seems like the appropriate response here but hitting the buttons is still a great idea. Thanks for coming. But today's video, we are talking about building a plan and I'm going to be really specifying this video around Zwift Academy. Yes, I know, I have been spamming your feed with Zwift Academy content lately. And that is because we are in the first week of the Academy and answering the questions that many of you are having now allows many of you to course correct and to adapt your training so that you can get the very most out of the next eight weeks and can be a very effective plan if you follow it accordingly. But to that end, if you look through the materials on Zwift Academy, you might be thinking, what plan? Many of you have read through all the materials and see all the workouts. Okay, I get that. I see what the purpose of those workouts are. I get the baseline and finish line rise. I get the recovery rise, but how do I put it all together? Why isn't Zwift handing up some kind of plan for me to follow like their other plans that they have? And the reason for that is twofold. First, I did mention in my Why You're Failing video that this is not really a program that is designed with the beginner in mind. It kind of presupposes that you have some history with structured training, that you can figure out where you're going to drag and drop these workouts into your existing framework. But moreover, and more importantly, is that trying to build a one size fits all approach to the academy or any plan for everybody out there is a fool's errand. There are just way too many permutations to consider here. Everybody has a different life. People's training plans need to be adapted to them, not force fed to them by some training program. You may only have four hours to train a week, or maybe you have 15 hours to train per week. Maybe you only have three days or seven days to train per week. Those hours could break down differently amongst those different days of the week. You may have a different objective. Are you training for just recreational fitness? Are you training for group rides? Are you training for races? What's your training history? What's your history as an athlete? Were you a collegiate athlete? Did you take several years off and come back to find cycling? All of those things could feed into how to build the best plan for you. This is what draws the distinction between having a coach and using a one size fits all plan. But Zwift trying to attack the greatest breadth of a demographic in terms of cycling that you'll ever find on any of these platforms, they're going to have an even more difficult time trying to build a plan that everybody can use. I was reticent to make this video because I'll run into the same problem. How do I actually get people to follow this particular academy program in a way that works best for them. And it's really almost impossible to answer. But what I'm hoping to provide is some examples of plans for different buckets of low, mid, and high volume that might generate some heuristics for you. You can see how things are periodized and how you can space out those sessions and fit that around your life so that you can build the best training plan that will fit you and your needs. So with that in mind, I'm gonna jump into Training Peaks here. I'm only using Training Peaks so I can show you with a calendar function, it blocks it out nice and cleanly. You don't need to use Training Peaks. You could use Google Calendar you can use pen and paper, you can just keep it in your head somewhere, you can use today's plan, whatever you want to use to actually calendarize what you're doing, that's up to you. I'm just using that for the purpose of this video. You can kind of see how things are laid out and I can drag and drop and move things around. The other thing that you're going to notice here is that I'm using a Monday through Sunday framework. That's usually the most common thing that you'll find for training blocks. It's just the typical Monday through Friday work schedule with weekends off, but I know that many of you do not fall into that paradigm. That's fine. Again, you'll see more of the rules of thumb that you want to use in terms of periodizing and then you can fit that to your particular life schedule. Again, you need to have the training schedule fit your life, not fit your life around a training schedule. So understand that that's very important to make this fit to you. If not, you're not going to succeed. Now I wanted to find some terms real quick for low, mid and high volume when I'm talking about these plans. A low volume plan is anywhere maybe up to five hours per week. A mid volume plan is usually you know five and a half to six hours up to eight hours per week. And a high volume plan is going to be in excess of eight hours, really all the way upwards to 15 or 20 for those of you 
who are spending a lot of time on your bike. Although those of you who are training probably 15 to 20 hours a week don't really need this video. But you may learn something here and you'll see a lot of similarities between the two as we go through. And that should drive home some of the heuristics that you need to follow in terms of building a training plan. So without any further ado, let's jump right into training peaks here. So I'll show you a few examples we have. So I'm going to start with low volume here. And even if you're not a low volume athlete, I really recommend that you follow along here because you're going to see where some of the similarities lie and you never know in a few weeks from now you could be forced onto a low volume protocol for life reasons so this might be helpful to you so what you'll see in common here is that this rest day or this active recovery day is going to fall on Monday every week. Now there's a specific reason that you'll see that. And that's because most people are going to be able to bake a lot of load into the weekends because those are days off. This is really that day that you come out of your days off where you might be busy at work. You're catching up on some things. You're getting back into the swing of being at work and doing all that stuff that might stress you out. You're going to try to shed that fatigue from the weekend. So this is a great day to introduce some rest. Now, if you're like me and you struggle a little bit with full rest where you come back the next day feeling a little bit heavy or stale you could introduce what I have here is active recovery or zone one and this is very easy just getting the lymphatic system moving just kind of getting that heart rate up just a little bit you're not baking in any more load here this isn't a workout this might be an easy cruise around town on like a fun bike or just a very light spin on a social ride on Zwift or a walk or a hike something that's not putting too much stress into the system but keeps those muscles moving to the point where they don't really stiffen up on you. Then on Tuesday, this is where I have baked in, I have it listed as intensity day, but really this is your high intensity day. This is where we're talking about your academy workouts here. So this is working more uh, in the case of this program, anything zone four and above here. So I have these introduced on Tuesday so you can kind of come in fresh after that rest day. And then for low volume, here you have a rest day or an active recovery day yet again. Now, I have three different versions of this low volume plan and they're going to start to uh, delineate themselves from Thursday forward. So this first plan here is for people who are very much beginners to riding in general, not just beginners to structured training. And this is like people in their first six months of riding who haven't built up a ton of generalized fitness yet. Maybe you're jumping onto Zwift and you really wanna participate in the program and get those unlocks, but you don't have a whole lot of history on the bike. This is where I would follow this first version of the plan. And you're going to be doing one high intensity day per week because that's really all you're going to be able to handle. It's going to be very difficult even to do that one day per week without that good generalized fitness, but it's okay to try and to push yourself and to work that high intensity if you can get a solid FTP through the testing protocols. So here on Thursday, I would introduce an endurance or recovery day. And the reason why it says endurance or recovery is because when you can work a shorter ride in endurance, you are still able to shed some fatigue. It's not full active recovery, but you are able to kind of bring that load or that stress in the system down a little bit by introducing a day like this. And this is just going to be for an hour. You'll also notice that I have here for the intensity days, I have these listed as an hour. Most of these workouts are 48 to 52 minutes long. I would just round out the full 60 minutes, usually by extending that cool down there. So you're gonna be an hour on Tuesday for intensity, an hour on Thursday for endurance and recovery day. Then you're going to have a full rest day on Friday. And then on Saturday, I would introduce maybe an endurance day or a long ride. So if you can get yourself on the bike for an hour and a half, two hours of just easy endurance riding, it's really going to help to build up that aerobic engine, which is fundamental to building up your FTP and all of those things that matter. You can't just do intensity days and expect that you're going to have a well-developed functional threshold. You need to really touch all of those energy systems and really work that aerobic engine. It's extremely important to work that endurance base in. If you are able to work both days on Saturday and Sunday, here's where I have what are called sweet spot or threshold efforts. And I have that listed for about an hour on Sunday. And what sweet spot or threshold efforts are, you could do that in terms of a structured workout, but this really more captures that maybe fun ride or challenging ride if you want to go with a group ride with friends or go with a punchy group ride on Zwift or maybe you want to go on a route on Zwift and attack the segments right so you're going to be riding endurance and a low level of intensity and then for a brief period of time maybe three four or five minutes maybe you'll put in a good effort at your sweet spot or your threshold level effort you're really kind of working that that different level or system of power you're not ultra high intensity but you're really 
activating or priming those key elements of your threshold level power or right beneath it. And then you can kind of see where you'll loop back around. You're going to have that rest day here again on Monday. Now, what you're going to notice here in terms of the structure is that you have some daylight in between any type of intensity here, right? So I've got, here's some intensity over here on Sunday. Here's some intensity on Tuesday. There's a rest day in between. If your schedule is prohibitive to this, you can maybe switch these days around. No big deal. Maybe you've got your sweet spot here. You still have several days in between your intensity days, right? This is going to be contingent on your schedule. So you can see that it's not hard and fast when you introduce some of these workouts, but that you actually put the appropriate amount of rest or recovery in between those intensity days so that your body can adapt to it especially as you're beginning. You do not want to push yourself too far and then deal with serious muscle soreness or injury or just not seeing any results. Now, the next schedule I have here is a bit of a variation on a theme here, but this is for those of you who have put in at least six months, if not a year of just consistent riding, just building up that aerobic engine. You're able to spend more time on the bike without getting fatigued. Maybe you've done some structured training before. So this is where you're just going to add in a little bit more intensity here. So here I have two two academy workouts per week. So again, rest and recovery day on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. You've got your high intensity days on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And again, the weekend is similarly structured. You're going to see you've got your sweet spot threshold efforts. You've got your endurance day long ride. Again, you can certainly switch these around. Not a big deal because you can see any way you slice it, you still have some daylight in between your higher intensity days, whether you're working at threshold or above, you have time to kind of recover from those days, either with full rest or with endurance recovery. The next version of a low volume plan, and this is going to be a very specific plan for a very specific subset of folks. If you are looking to maybe compete in swift races for those short crit races or crit races out on the road, or you really want to work that high intensity and you're maybe a little bit more advanced as a rider, but you just have less hours to train this is where I would adapt this particular plan one more way. And the only difference here is that I've replaced that sweet spot and threshold day with this intensity day. And depending on what academy workout you land on, it might even be in that sweet spot or threshold zone. But this is putting in three intensity days with academy workouts per week. And the only reason I'm recommending it for this low volume plan in this particular instance is because by merit of being low volume, you are already baking in a good amount of rest. If you're only working four to five hours per week, then you may as well make those four to five hours a week count. You need to be able to uh, recover, which you can on a low volume plan, but I would not recommend this at a higher volume. But still, I would not ignore that endurance engine. At least work in one day per week where you can get that long endurance ride in. If you have to make a choice between adding in one more intensity day or doing a longer endurance ride, I would put the longer endurance ride in there. You can't just pull your FTP up from the top by doing all high intensity sharpening workouts. It becomes a very shallow type of fitness where it just falls apart. If you try to do longer rides or if you try to recover more or enhance your repeatability, there's nothing to land on if you haven't built that aerobic engine, that you haven't built that wide base of the pyramid. So wherever you can introduce some of these endurance long rides, they will be beneficial. A two hour ride is going to do a lot more for you than several one hour rides. There is no replacement for a long endurance ride. So the longer that you can make those, on a day off or a weekend day, the better off you're going to be. So even on a low volume plan, I would try to introduce at least one of those longer rides of two hours or more per week, if at all possible. So I'll move into the mid volume plan here and you'll find that this is just variations on a theme. We're just basically dressing this up with more volume at endurance. So you can see rest day on Monday. On Tuesday, you have an intensity day. On Wednesday, instead of an off day, now you have an endurance recovery day, which is maybe an hour of riding at zone two. You can continue to push that up at a higher percentage of your zone two as you become more advanced. Yes, it's not full recovery. However, you are giving those other high intensity systems, those type two muscle fibers, a chance to recover before introducing more intensity yet again for another academy workout on Thursday. On Friday, you could introduce that rest day here, right? This is a five day program here. On Saturday and Sunday, again, you'll see the similar format, sweet spot and threshold efforts and long endurance ride. Those are really important elements of a training 
training plan to just work those different systems. I'm not going to rehash that again here, but you can see these plans are very similar. What you're doing is you're just adding a little bit more volume here. Maybe you're making these rides a little bit longer. See this endurance day is two and a half hours instead of two hours. Maybe you can make this sweet spot threshold ride an hour and 30 minutes up to two hours as opposed to an hour long in a low volume plan. It's really going to depend on you and your schedule. And even going on down to high volume, you're going to see pretty much the same thing going on here, right? You've got your rest days on Mondays, but look, you've got a full six day week now, and you've got intensity days on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You've got endurance recovery on Wednesdays and Fridays. If you could only ride five days a week, but longer on those days, you can back this maybe Friday out here. I'd recommend it being on a Friday before a harder weekend. Put a rest day in here if you need to. Now you can see your endurance long ride. That's longer. That's going to be three hours. Your or sweet spot threshold efforts, those might be up to two hours. If you're even higher volume than that, you just start to add in endurance here. Maybe your intensity days, you add 30 minutes of endurance on each of those days. On your endurance recovery days, maybe these are 90 minutes instead of an hour. Maybe your endurance long ride, maybe that's five hours instead of three hours. You can see that what we're doing as we add in volume to the program is not putting in more intensity days, but supporting those intensity days with really building that base of fitness. By by adding in more endurance volume. The higher volume you get as an athlete, the more you need to approach that polarized model, that Steven Seiler model, where you're working that kind of 80% of low intensity, 20% high intensity, sometimes even less high intensity. Sometimes it's 90-10 if you're ultra high volume. It's not about adding more intensity to make you stronger as an athlete. It's about building up that aerobic engine that can push your FTP up from the bottom while you sprinkle in that intensity to pull up that FTP from the top at the same time and give you the ability to execute higher percentages of your FTP for longer periods of time. It's very important to understand this, that you're spacing these workouts out. Again, every single one of these volume programs, you can see that there is space between recovery. Even if you have to move these days around, you put that sweet spot over there, you still have some time to recover between your intensity days because that is how the muscles adapt. I will link that video down below that I did several weeks ago about overload and plateauing as an athlete. A lot of times this happens because people are doing this wrong. It's not an exact science, but the idea of periodizing around the fact that you can kind of recover and shed fatigue and let the muscles rebuild between active sets is so critical. Even watching the pros, you are going to see the same format play out. They're going to be spending some very quality sessions at high intensity, but that's not going to round out the greater breadth of their volume. If you think that the pro triathletes, the pro cyclists, the pro runners of the world are just doing track sessions or high intensity sessions five days a week, you're sorely mistaken. I'm telling you right now, they are doing the same type of model. Yes, they are working more hours per week because it is their full-time job, but that means they're spending even more of those hours focusing on just general recovery as well as working on their endurance engine. They are certainly not doing 15 hours a week of high intensity work and another 10 hours a week of endurance. They're not even doing half of that. And if you don't believe me, a lot of pros share their workouts online on Strava. You can take a look at what they're physically doing. They are not just blowing their brains out every single one of their workouts. They are spending a lot of time in that endurance zone. Yes, they are much more powerful and faster than us at those zones, but relative to them, they are only spending a small amount of time working that sharpening, that high intensity, and most of their time building the aerobic engine. At risk of repeating myself way too many times in this video, I cannot understate that enough. I know I've said it a ton of times because it's so fundamentally important to improving as an athlete to understand whether you're low, mid, or high volume. It does not mean you just put more and more intensity into the system. That's a recipe for overtraining and injury. Adding more volume just means adding more work at that important fundamental aerobic baseline. You can see that at the lower volumes, the percentage of your work at higher intensity is higher, and that's because you have more built-in recovery in between, not because that's the particular percentage that you want to extrapolate to every different training plan. But I hope that by going through the different models and volumes of plans, you are able to understand the similarities in those plans and that the differences really come from working that endurance and that aerobic engine. And that way you can take how many hours and how many days you have a week to train and take those workouts that you're finding in Zwift Academy and sprinkling them in appropriately. Many of you will probably be looking at two of these per week. Okay, where am I training for the rest of my, my week? Okay, I'm gonna put my 
first workout here and I'm gonna put my second workout here. That gives me a day or two in between. I can recover. This is where I do my long ride and that will give you the most effective training plan so that you can continue to improve without moving backwards or worse yet, injuring yourself. I know I did not go into all the nitty gritty here. I just kind of pointed and moved some boxes around and buzzed through this because this science of creating training plans and periodization is very in depth. You know, if you really wanna get into that, look at these books, Training and Racing with a Power Meter and the Cyclist Training Bible. This really breaks things down. I mean, these books are pretty thick. If I were going to put this material in a video, you would be here for hours. This video is really just meant to be a primer to get you started so that you can spend the next seven weeks of the Zwift Academy program getting the most out of it and building it around you. The training program needs to fit your life, not the other way around. So I hope that you got that out of this video. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them down below. I'll do my best to help you guys out more down there. If you got any value out of this video, please hit that thumbs up button. It really does help to put these videos out in front of other people who may find some benefit from them. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. See ya.